No need to buy a new battery. With one simple trick, I brought a seemingly dead watch back to life instantly. Or maybe you're tired of the hassle and expense of taking it to a shop for a simple battery swap. Don't worry, we've all been there. Welcome to today's video, where I'll walk you through an easy, money-saving way to replace your alarm clock battery right at home. No fuss, no stress. In just a few minutes, with a couple of simple tools, you'll have your clock ticking perfectly again. Ready to give it a try? Grab a cup of coffee, press play, and let's get started. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment to share how it worked for you. Both watches had completely dead batteries. The hands were frozen as if they had given up, but I decided to try restoring the old batteries instead of replacing them. At this stage, I decided to install a new battery in the clock to recheck the entire circuit and internal mechanism. As soon as the new batteries were inserted with the correct polarity, the second hand began moving smoothly, and the minute and hour hands gradually returned to their normal rhythm. This confirmed that the clock itself was still in perfect working condition, and the only reason it had stopped before was the weakened batteries. This clock has stopped working because the battery ran out. If you don't have a spare battery or you run out of the right kind, try this trick of mine. These are all the old batteries I've used, and not a single one still works. The first step was taking out the multimeter and checking the voltage of each battery to see how much charge remained. To be sure where the problem was, the next step was to use a voltmeter to test each battery individually. When placing the probes of the voltmeter on the two terminals of the battery, the display showed 0.00V, indicating that the battery had completely lost its voltage and would normally be considered dead. At this voltage level, most people would assume there is no way to revive it, However, I'm going to share a simple method to restore a battery that seems completely useless. Next, I use these two magnets to create a simple tool designed to apply a stimulating effect to the battery. When the battery was placed into this homemade tool, the weak current inside was briefly reactivated, just enough to break it out of its previous completely dormant state. I prepared two single core wires and stripped the plastic insulation from both ends of each wire. Once the insulation was removed, the copper cores were clearly exposed, clean and bright, ensuring good electrical contact. These two wires would serve as temporary conductors to guide and transmit current within the homemade device. After that, I firmly attached the two magnets together. Next, I wrapped the stripped copper wires around the body of the magnet winding them evenly so that the coil sat tightly against the magnet surface. Next, I wrapped the remaining copper wire around the magnet in the same way, arranging the coils parallel and balanced with the first winding. Viewed as a whole, the two coils wrapped around the two magnets form a structure quite similar to the basic principle of a simple electric motor, the magnet at the center, with the copper wire acting as an inductive coil surrounding it. When I connected the battery to the two ends of the copper wires, this homemade circuit began to take effect. Through the brief contact in the magnet coil structure, the weak current inside the battery was stimulated again. In this USB cable, I kept only the two power supply wires and removed the green and white wires since those are used solely for data and signal transmission and are completely unnecessary for this purpose. Next, 
I connected the two power wires of the USB cable to the copper wires that had already been wrapped around the magnet. The contact points were placed closely together and firmly secured to ensure that the current could flow continuously without interruption. Once this step was completed, the entire system, from a USB power source and wiring to the magnet coil assembly, was linked into a complete circuit ready for the next step of activating the current inside the battery. After all the connections were completed, I plugged the USB connector into a power source to supply electricity to the entire circuit. At that moment, I use a voltmeter and place the probes on the two copper wire terminals of the magnet assembly to check the voltage. At this point, when the voltmeter probes were placed on the two copper wire terminals, the display clearly and steadily showed a value of 6 volts. This reading confirmed that the power from the USB port was being transmitted through the wiring and the magnet assembly exactly as intended. Next, I placed a battery between the two copper wire ends, making sure that both terminals of the battery were in direct contact and correctly aligned with the conductors. During this process, I only lightly touched the battery with my hand to monitor its temperature. As soon as it began to warm up slightly, that was sufficient. There was no need to leave it in place for too long. The slight warming of the battery indicates that current has taken effect and the activation process is underway. It should not be continued any longer to avoid overheating the battery or causing instability. After completing the activation process, I removed the battery and checked it again with a voltmeter. This time, when the probes were placed on the two terminals of the battery, the display showed 1.5 volts, which matches the battery's original standard voltage. This result indicates that the battery's voltage had been restored from zero making it suitable to be reinstalled in the clock and continue to be used in low power devices. Finally, I reinstalled the battery back into the alarm clock, placing it in the correct position and with the proper polarity as before. As soon as the battery cover was closed, the second hand began to move, followed by the minute and hour hands returning to their familiar, steady rhythm. The energy stored inside the battery only lasts for a short period, typically just a few days before it weakens again. This is not a long-term replacement solution, but rather a temporary and experimental approach intended to make brief use of the battery and extend its usability slightly before a new one is required. After trying the first method and clearly seeing its limitations, I will move on to the second tip if you don't have magnets or copper wire available, you can use this alternative approach instead. The second tip is even much simpler. It still uses a charger, but this time I'll add a plastic bottle and a clothespin to hold the battery in place. First, I secured the red wire to the positive terminal of the battery, making sure the contact point was precisely on the end marked with the plus symbol. The wire was firmly fixed so it would not shift during the process, ensuring a stable and continuous flow of current. Next, I cut off the bottom of the plastic bottle to create a simple holder. After being cut, the bottle took the form of a short container, 
wide enough to place a battery and the related components inside. After that, I poured a sufficient amount of water into container made from the cut plastic bottle, then added salt and stirred until it completely dissolved. At this point, the salt water solution acted as a temporary conductive medium. Next, I took a rivet and connected it to the other wire of the system. The rivet would serve as a fixed contact point, allowing current to flow from the wire to the battery when it is placed into the salt water solution. I safely connected the system to a power source, then placed the battery inside the cut plastic bottle ensuring that the negative terminal of the battery touched the rivet, while the positive terminal made contact with the previously secured red wire. The surrounding salt water gently conducted electricity between the contact points, allowing current to flow and reactivating the electrochemical reaction inside the battery. At the negative terminal of the battery, small bubbles began to form and rise in the salt water solution. This bubbling indicates that a mild electrochemical reaction is occurring at the contact point where the current is interacting with the electrolyte, the bubbles are typically tiny and steady. After the activation process was complete, I removed the battery and wiped the negative terminal clean with a dry cloth or soft paper. This step helps remove any remaining salt water residue or debris, ensuring good electrical contact when reinstalling the battery into the clock. To clean it more thoroughly, I gently rubbed the negative terminal of the battery with fine sandpaper, removing any oxidation or residue on the metal surface. Then, I sprayed a small amount of WD-40 on the terminal and wiped it evenly, making the surface shiny and improving conductivity. This step ensures that when the battery is reinstalled in the clock, it makes perfect contact, reducing the chance of intermittent connection and optimizing performance after being revived. After cleaning the negative terminal, I measured the battery's voltage again with a voltmeter. This time, the display showed a value close to 1.5 volts, nearly matching the standard voltage of a new battery. This result demonstrates that the battery had been effectively revived, capable of supplying stable power to the alarm clock or other low energy devices for a short period. When I installed the revived battery back into the alarm clock, I carefully placed it in its compartment ensuring that the positive and negative terminals align correctly with the corresponding contacts. As soon as the battery was seated properly and the cover closed, the second hand began to move smoothly, followed by the minute and hour hands returning to their normal rhythm. The clock immediately started ticking, producing a steady, audible sound, clear evidence that the battery was supplying sufficient power and making perfect contact with the internal circuit. When I inserted the revived battery into a computer mouse for testing, I carefully aligned the positive and negative terminals with the contacts inside the battery compartment. As soon as the battery was in place, the mouse powered on immediately. The LED light lit up, the cursor moved smoothly across the screen, and all buttons responded correctly with the two simple methods just demonstrated. You can see that even batteries considered dead 
can still be revived, extending their usage time without the immediate cost of buying new ones. While their performance won't match that of new batteries, and they are only suitable for low power devices, these methods still provide a useful temporary solution, both cost effective and a practical way to test the remaining potential of old batteries.